Hello, welcome to another video. I've done a lot of videos on the EV, my electric vehicle recently. So today is a bit of a change. I'm gonna do another tractor video. Love my little compact tractor. Now I thought I would explain, uh, there's been a heck of a winter this year in the US, going down as far as Texas. Uh, and it's been, a, it's been an okay winter in Europe as well. So compact tractors, I think a lot of people are now starting to look at compact tractors. They are great at snow work. I will show you mine now. So this, this video is intended uh, for people who are thinking about, if you're like, basically if you're fed up with doing snow work with your, with your shovel or your pushy shovel that I call it. I'm not sure where mine is. Uh, that's because I don't use it, I've got the tractor. So if you're fed up of doing back breaking snow work, get a compact tractor. Like seriously, there's no, there's no, there's no sort of magic to, to doing snow work with a, with, a, with a compact tractor. You might look at these guys with snow tractors with blowers and all kinds and you're like, oh man, you must need some serious training and all kinds to do snow work on a tractor. Yes, knowing what you're doing does help, but you can, as long as you're not a total goofball, you can jump on a compact tractor and within 30 minutes, you'll be plowing snow like a boss, ju just from basically trial and error. I'm gonna show you how I do it now. You don't need anything special. Yes, you can get big, cool snow blowers, hydraulic. You can aim it in different directions and you can get nice hydraulic plows and V plows. You can get a lot of cool stuff, but you don't actually need all that. All you need is what comes with the tractor anyway, the front loader with a bucket. It doesn't have to be a massive bucket or anything special. This is just my general purpose bucket that you use to lift sand and dirt and soil, whatever. You don't need anything special. You will see I've got a, a blade on the back. That's if you've got a long driveway, you will, I mean, I can do the driveway with the bucket, but it takes a few passes. So it's nice if you've got like just a basic blade that was only, that was so cheap, only a few hundred. Uh, so it's nice if you've got a long driveway or like a road or something that you need to plow. It's nice to be able to like displace the snow, like just move it out the way, sort of guide the snow out the way. But if you've just got like a small driveway in front of your house or like a yard, like, like I've got here, you only need the front bucket. So let me show you how I do it. I will give you a demonstration first. I mean, I've got a massive, massive amount of snow here that I, that I need to do. So I will show you what I do, and then I'll show you how I do it. So first of all, let's, i try to get the camera position so you can see the amount of snow I get. Okay, hopefully that picks it up. Oh, by the way, I have a flat tire on the front wheel of the tractor. Just ignore that. Yes, it's not a very good it's not good practice to be driving your tire, uh, your tractor with a flat tire. No, it won't damage the rim because I'm on soft snow. No, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> but I'm in the middle of the wilderness. I've got, there's no way I can fix the tire. It is what it is. I need to, I'm fed up. I'm always getting, I'm always getting flat tires on the front of my compact tractor because there's the bead. If you've got a front loader, and your temperatures go down to like minus 40, which mine do, the bead keeps breaking on the rim. So I'm gonna put inner tubes in, in it and that's gonna be the end of all my flat tire issues. So I'm gonna do this demonstration and a little bit of snow work in the yard with a totally flat tire with the wheel, with the tire hanging off the rim. Don't moan at me for that. It, it is what it is. I'm not gonna start going places, driving miles. With, with my goofy wheel. It's just for this de demo. So 
I know, hate is gonna hate on me. It doesn't feel nice doing it, but whatever. Let's get it, let's get it done. It's as simple as that. Move the ton of snow there really quick. I will show you just how much snow there is because there's from that angle you can't really see. It's well over a foot deep. See here. There's my there's my leg. Well over a foot deep these mounds of snow. So I basically I'll show you exactly how I do it. Hopefully you can hear me over the tractor. I will keep the RPM quite low here. Normally I put the RPM around 1500 doing snow work. 
Now normally I put the RPM on uh, the 540 for the PTO. So what I do, you want to put the buckets on float. So it's just gravity. When you push it, when you push your lever, if you push it forward once, you're using hydraulic pressure and it will lift, it will lift the tractor up. You don't want that. You don't want to be pushing into the ground. If you push it forward twice, one, two, it goes into float mode. Let me do that again, I'll bring it back up. So watch now, one, two. It's just, it's just falling with its own weight in this float, float mode. It's just gravity bringing it down. So now the loader is just resting on the floor. It's not being pushed down. And then if you're, if you're, see this bar here, this like small bar coming up, that's your level indicator on your loader. Mine's foobard. Mine bent on in the first week and I, I did grease it. It's just, just a bit of a poor design really. So that's useless. If yours works, use that to check when your bucket is level. If you don't have that, just hang out the side of the tractor and look, look at your bucket. See the front of the bucket. You want, you want. You want this flat. You can tell, you can tell by looking at it from the driver's seat if this is flat or not. Because you want this blade to just go along the floor nice and flat. You don't want it pointed down because it will dig in the floor and then you can actually damage the, your loader. If, if it jams in the floor, you, you can bend your loader and, or snap it in serious cold. So you want this really nice and level with the floor and it will just, as I say, it's just gravity pushing it down. So it will follow any, any contours of the ground. It will just sort of like go over bumps and stuff and it'll just stay level. So you want it nice and level. Too far back and it won't actually pick up much snow at all. Too far forward it will dig in and it, will, it, will, it can damage, damage the tractor. So keep it nice and flat. If you're trying this for the first time, just be nice and careful. Just, just, just be nice and slow driving forward until you get the hang of it. And you will get the hang of it. I promise you that, it's not, it's not rocket science. <laughs> so I'll put it on float mode now. And then you can tell when, when you're dropping it down, you can adjust the angle of the bucket as it's lowering. So I'll put it on float. That's about, that's good. And if you can hear it start digging into the floor, if you've got it, the bucket pointed too far towards the ground, it'll start ch catching and scraping. So then you can just roll it back a little bit, just a, t just a tiny amount. And then if, it, if you've got it really wrong, just bring it back up and then do it again, float. So let's try that. I generally do my snow work in medium gear. Uh, I sometimes do it in high when I don't have a flat tire. <laughs> I'll do it in high, but then you got to have the revs quite high uh, because it, it does want to stall a little bit if you're doing it in high gear. But man, it's so fast. When you're doing snow work in high gear, it's like meow, meow, meow. It's amazing the speed you can get get snow work done. So I'm going to keep the RPMs low now. So actually, no, I'll keep it in M. So now let's see how it goes. I will try and get that big mound of snow near near the tripod. Let's see if you can see the the bucket doing its thing. So I'm just in float, 
not actually doing anything. Both hands are free. The bucket is doing all the work. I can see snow coming out of the side. So I know it's getting snow. Let's go take a look and see what's in the bucket. So I, that looks pretty good under the tractor. Hey, well check that out. I got an absolute ton in the bucket. And then all I got to do is just keep, keep moving forward and then I could dump it there. Or I can come at it from another angle if I maneuver this. If I drop that load of snow there now, I can come at it from another angle and put it on my big, big pile here. So it's that simple to do snow work in your yard. Mega easy. The blade is pretty useful also. You can get by with just with just a bucket. If if for instance now I need to get this massive amount of snow out from under here. This is all this is also like a foot a foot deep. So the problem with the bucket is uh if you're going forwards, you're just going to push the snow into this into this top shelter. So you can put you can put the bucket vertical down and then back scrape with the bucket. I do that occasionally, but the blade is very good for pulling snow out. So I will pull this snow out with the back blade. I'll probably pull it over to there, and then I will do the same thing I've just done. I will just push it with in float mode and pile of snow up there. So drag, push, drag, push. I shall do that now. Remember I've got a flat tire, so maneuvering the tractor is not so good now. One of my steering wheels is not steering. So it might look like I'm making a real meal of it, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> Now I shall drag all this snow out.
so I've dragged all the snow out now. It's pretty neat that. that. That Volvo does not work, so I don't actually need access to this tarp, but I clean the snow just because it's, I, I like to be quite neat. So now all the snow is out in the middle of the yard. So now all I have to do is use the float mode again and pile it all up here, which I will do. Okay, here's the back, the back scraping. I can't be bothered turning around and using the blade now. So I'm gonna do some back scraping with the bucket to get snow in front of this trailer. There might be a jock, there might be a jockey wheel on the trailer. Mm, I can't remember, so we'll take it quite easy. And there we have it. So it's as simple as that. This is a 39 horsepower 
compact tractor. It's nothing special, pretty cheap. I've seen, I've seen guys do snow work on like, on tractors as small as like my lawnmower. I've got like this ride on lawnmower and I've seen guys with tractors the same size that does it, you know? So you don't have to be, you don't have to go big. I don't have chains or studded tires on, on my tractor. I've just got the industrial tires and uh, that works fine, but it depends where you are in the world because my snow is just dry, dry snow. There's no ice underneath. Uh, it's, it's, it's not wet or slushy. This is perfectly dry snow. So it's very light and easy to move. This, this tractor is actually overkill. I can, I can just, I could get by with a much smaller tractor in here. So if you're thinking about getting a small tractor for snow work, absolutely recommend it. I had no experience whatsoever of tractors when I bought this and then it got delivered on a truck. And I was, I was a total noob when I got it. I was like, okay, what does this do? What does this do? Never read the manual, of course. Why, why the heck would you read a manual? Typical bloke. So uh, you, you just learn by doing. So don't, don't be afraid or intimidated or like whatever you do, do not go on the internet. Okay, you're on the internet now watching this, but don't go on forums or, or anything because these guys, these, these, these like, you know, not keyboard warriors, but these people who are very opinionated and say, oh no, you must have this, or you must have that, or you must do it this way, or don't do it that way, or you're gonna die a horrible fiery death. Don't, just don't go there. Just, just like buy a tractor and, and play with it. Ign just ignore people. Like the, the world is full of people who try to talk you out of stuff or try to talk you down or say, no, no, you don't, what do you know about tractors? Uh, well, you're never gonna know anything about tractors unless you get one and start playing with it. So, so just, just, just get one. Even if it's like, this was brand new, I got this brand new. Uh, doesn't really need any big servicing until quite a few hundred hours. So I don't, I'm not at the big servicing change yet. The, most of the first things, or checks, just check the oil levels, check check the coolant, check any check for leaks and stuff. So I've not really had to do any big servicing yet, but I am going to soon. Even though I'm quite a, I'm like a hundred or so hours away from the big service, I'm going to service this early just because I love it, and I can. <clears throat> so that's that's my advice. Stop breaking your back with uh, shovels. Get yourself a tractor. Preferably one that doesn't have a flat tire. Have you seen this? Like, I've literally just been doing snow work with a tire that's off the rim. <laughs> that's why it was a little bit messy and not as neat as I normally would. Uh, uh, the, normally, like, I'm way, way better. But then I've just got to do with what, what I've, I've been dealt with. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, it's just like float, float mode with the bucket and you can move, you can move more snow in like 10 minutes with this tractor than you can in like 10 hours with a, with a shovel. Just, just, uh, it's just so easy. So don't, don't overthink things like just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm from England and from like a place I've not, I'm sort of semi countryside, but never, never been around tractors or machinery. I've just learned all this just by trial and error. Like I've got lo log splitters, chainsaws, like push along snow throwers. All this stuff was alien to me coming from a small town in England. And I moved to Finland 10 years ago and just, I just bought all this stuff and just learned to use it just by trial and error. So I'm a firm believer of like, you can do anything. You can do, you can do anything you want to do and don't let anybody say you can't or you shouldn't or get someone else in to do it. Oh, that's the worst thing you can do, get someone else in. I, I had that option before I bought this tractor. I've got this wilderness plot of land that I use with customers to do our snowmobile trips from in the Arctic. 
I had the decision, do I get a local in with a tractor to, uh, to do the snow work? Or do I buy a tractor? And I literally gave it five seconds thought and went, I will buy my own tractor and le learn how to do snow work and learn how to, how to do all this. So five years now, I've been doing the snow work here and we have never ever had problems with the, with the tour buses having access problems. I've always been impeccable on time every single time with the snow work if if you have to rely on someone they could do, they could be sick or they could be just like drunk or or hung over or just like not not reliable the, the and all the above were in this area i'm not going to mention any names but you can't rely you can't really rely on the locals where where i am the the just I'm just not going to say any more on that so just rely on the only person you can rely on is yourself so just believe in yourself go get a tractor even if the wife says no just get it anyway because when you come home with a tractor what's she going to do is she going to drive it back to the shop <laughs> I don't think so never ask never ask your wife for anything uh like permission just get it and bring it home and then let her moan that that's the worst that can happen if you ask permission and she says no and then you get it you get double barreled moaning i told you not to get that if you don't ask permission go get it bring it home she doesn't have that she doesn't have that in, in her locker she can't say i told you not to get that how dare you cross me it's just like why did you get that really do you really need that it's much less it's much less of a moan so never ask permission, just get stuff, bring it home, and then deal with the fallout. Uh, I done the best I could with the flat tire. I, I came down to do this video, it's like, it's 60, 65 miles, it's 100 kilometers from my house in the north. I've got a wilderness cottage here that I have to go to on a snowmobile. So this is very out the way place, and I thought, I'll do a little video on snow work with, my, with the tractor. And then I get here and it's a flat tire and I'm like, ah, oh, but I've done it anyway. So excuse the flat tire, but it's a piece of cake, the absolute piece of cake doing snow work with a tractor. The Coyote tractors, definitely recommend them. I've been in the Coyote Facebook groups for five years now. And like, okay, a few people say they've had a couple problems here and there, but Coyote sell like many thousands of tractors many tens of thousands of tractors all over the world and uh, th th not many, there's not many problems on them. I've not had a single problem on this. Apart from the, the, uh, the flat tire issue, this seems to be a recurring issue, but I'm gonna put inner tubes in it and then that's solved. So very, very reliable. Start in minus 20, minus 25. Doesn't have the block heater, wish it did, but doesn't have it. But it's a direct injection, little hint there. Any compact tractor you get, try and get a, a direct injection diesel. Don't get the old like swirl pots, the old fashioned diesel engine. Try and get the direct injection because they start so easy in the cold. Like the old, the older diesel engines, you know, got to cycle the glow plugs 15 times. And then it's like, this is just like instant. You, you cycle the glow plugs two or three times, only really needs it once, but I always do it two or three times anyway. And then it just goes zoom, straight to life. So try and get a direct injection. I think there's like a CDTI engine. This is like a 1.8 liter direct injection diesel engine. Brill just brilliant. And the fuel efficiency, it's like, I put 20 liters in, maybe, that's like four or four gallons or something. About once every two months. <laughs> like it barely uses any fuel. Like if you're working all day with the with the RPMs cranked up to full and you're doing like a full 10 hours on the tractor, like tons of work, you might use like a quarter of a tank. Seriously, it's a, it's absolutely amazing on fuel. So if you're only doing snow work, maybe a couple times a week for an hour or two. It'll last a month, the diesel. It's a, it's a 38 litre tank. And uh, 
it'll last a month. It costs about 20. So it costs about 25 euros a month in diesel. It costs nothing to run, nothing. If you do your own maintenance, you change the oil and stuff every few hundred hours. Really, they're so cheap to run. So the only outlay you've got is buying it, really. Uh, if you get like a not reliable one, that's not new, doesn't have a warranty, okay, then it could get pricey if, uh, if you're suffering breakdowns and stuff. But if you get a new one that's under warranty, you do your own servicing, uh, they cost nothing really to run. So you've only got to buy the thing and then it doesn't cost much. Anyway, I'm going to stop chatting. This is turning into a flipping three hour long epic. Have fun tractoring. It is great fun. I, I, I should have got a cab. <laughs> Look around. I should have got a cab. But uh, I like being out in the elements and you have better visibility without the cab. You can see exactly what everything's doing. You can see like where your bucket's level and everything. And it's easy. It's nice to get in both sides of the tractor. With a cab, you've got the door on one side. I can jump, I, and I do. I jump off both sides of this quite often, especially if I'm in the woods doing tree work. It's nice to be able to get access both sides and all stuff. So, hope this video was useful. If you're considering a compact tractor, get one. If you, if you want to ask me any questions, do so in the comments. Any buying advice on Coyote-specific models, uh, any. Any, I, I'm, I'm not too keen on the CS models. I'm not sure if they've got the direct injection diesel engines now, but they, they've been having some cold issues starting. They're like the CS2200 or whatever, or the, what is it, the CS2210. So my advice for, for Coyotes is the CK2610, the CK3510, the CK4010, which is what mine is. They're, they're all great. The CK2610, despite it being like, you think 2610 is much smaller than the 4010. It's not, it's, very, it's almost identical tractor. So the 2610 is a great, great tractor as well. So uh, ask me, ask me anything you want. I've also got, no, I'm not gonna say that. Oh, I think it's out of warranty now, so I will say it. I've got a three point backhoe <laughs> as well. It says in big bold letters in the Coyote owner's manual, do not use three point backhoes. First thing I've done when I got this tractor, I went and bought a three point backhoe and I've used it a lot and there's no issues, but that's a whole, that's a whole other video. Gonna get a lot of hate on that, but if you get a small backhoe, that's not gonna rip the, the tractor to pieces. I think it's okay if, if you know what to do. And ex same again, I didn't know what to do, but I was just gentle at first gentle gentle practice trial and error okay that sounds like it might strain the tractor so just 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 take it easy when you're first learning like anything just take it easy don't don't overwork the tractor you can't you can't really overwork these because if the hydraulics don't lift something they ain't gonna lift it if you if you have too much weight in the in the front like if you've got pallet forks on which i also have for this and you're trying to lift something that weighs two tons, the, tra the tractor's not gonna break itself apart doing it. The hydraulics just won't lift it. Like, so uh, you, can't, you can't really, you can if you're, a real, if you're a real douche, you can damage your tractor, but generally it's, you've gotta really be doing something wrong to, to break a tractor, like bumping into something with the front loader or, or like, the, the, the biggest danger is with weight in the front loader is the tractor tipping over, but that's why you have this rollover protection bar. Always have that up. I see so many pictures where the guys have folded them down. Why, why do that? If the tractor rolls over, you're gonna snap your neck. Always have your rollover bar over, up, up upright. And then there's no danger, even if the tractor tips over, you, you, you don't get hurt. Anyway, this is getting way too long. Thanks for watching and bye.